young people of Ireland. I love you. So this year now, for example, the guys that have applied, five have applied currently, and the youngest is 26, and the eldest is 43. So and they and bring a whole range of experiences, electricians, accountants, um, people who've worked in uh, farming backgrounds, uh, people who've been working abroad in missions, you know, volunteering, and uh, so that you get a whole variety backgrounds and again they bring all those skills and like life experience with them so that's the thing about priesthood today is you get guys of all ages and experience but what you find mainly with the men who are now going for the priesthood or deciding that they have a vocation is that they're older they're usually men who've been maybe out of the world for a while um, they're not coming straight from secondary school as was the pattern in the past many people believe that that is much more healthy they understand life better uh, they have lived outside of an institutional context. I mean, the man who wants to be a priest in the current climate is probably a very genuine personality. Being a priest is class. I mean, I can't, you know, I, I suppose it's sort of still in honeymoon period at the moment. I mean, it's still not even two years ordained. Uh, and so maybe it could be a bit, you know, I'd give the long haul and give me a few years. Maybe it could be, you know, the whole, the challenge of it, and I'm sure we'll, we'll come home even closer. But being a priest is brilliant. It's even better than I imagined it would be, really. And... I mean, I could not possibly think of doing anything else. I wouldn't want to do anything else. Well, I mean, I think it's, I think, you know, it's, it's amazing. And I, even now since being ordained, I mean, it, it is amazing the amount of, of, of young men and, and not so young who are considering, who have thought about maybe for a long time the priesthood. And, you know, there are so many, um, I've come across quite a few already. I remember in my class starting out, um, I think there was 21 or 22, 22 of us. Um, there was a broad range there. There was a couple of guys who come straight from school, you know, they were 18, and then there was, I suppose, the majority of guys were coming from a background where they already had a, maybe a degree behind them, um, and then maybe coming in, like myself, maybe a couple of years' work experience. And then there was a couple of guys who would have been maybe in their 40s, you know, up to that age, so there's a lot of diversity, people come from different backgrounds. Um, so, um, in fairness, and I think maybe that's something that has changed a little bit, like that, um, guys who go to study for the priesthood bring maybe a lot more of, of themselves um, and maybe encourage more, you know, to, I suppose, that we all have our human gifts and talents to try and incorporate that, you know, that, you know, you don't just leave everything at the door. Now, if somebody made a, a decision to go out for priesthood, uh, the family usually wouldn't be very happy about it and usually the community would be disinterested in it, it wouldn't feel they were supporting them or whatever. So. It's very much the wind on, on the face of anybody now who's making a decision to become a priest is really running counter to the culture of the day. In terms of the young priests, I mean, part of the difficulty we have is that we have very few vocations to the priesthood. But part of the other difficulty we have is that the vocations we're getting are like the people, are like my parish priest in the 40s and the 50s at home. They're traditional. They want to wear black. They want to wear soutans. They want to talk to people about sin. They will only hear confessions in the confessional box. They want the Latin mass, and they want to dress up in vestments, and they want to do all of this sort of thing, like people did 40, 60 years ago, 70 years ago. So I, I, I despair of the young priests. I prefer if we have got them, if they're going to be like this, because people can't know, know what to make of them. Well, you see, I mean, I just don't think... I, I don't think... There, there, may be a, there may be something in... In, you know, there is that, there perhaps is that, that generational gap as I talk about. I don't think the conversation is necessarily helping. You know, the labels that are being batted about, you know, conservative or liberal, rigid, uh, you know, or whatever word you might use. I mean, I just don't think that's a, a useful, uh, a helpful conversation to have when it comes to anything in the church. Because, you know, we're not a political party. We're, the church isn't some sort of ideology. It's not some sort of, you know government or, or organization that sets a sort of and that changes you know with with a change in administration or, or something like that but, you know we in essence the church is about communicating the gospel bringing the gospel bringing the sacraments to people and that that hasn't changed for centuries that that is what we're about Asperger.